This time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call the uh, this uh, Board of Adjustment meeting to order. Matt Ray, would you uh, mind giving us the, the invocation? As as we all play or pray as our own personal persuasions, we ask that you uh, you guide this board and give this board the knowledge to make the decisions that it must. Uh, we ask only for a, a safe return home to our friends and family. In your name, we pray. Amen. 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 Take, at this time, take a few minutes to review the minutes from our last meeting of January 27, 2016. Moved, approved. I have a motion for approval. Is there a second? Can we ask who made the motions? I did. I'm sorry. Marty and Mr. Goldman. Mr. Goldman made the first motion. The second was from. Mr. Stewart. Mr. Stewart. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. So, so be it. Okay. <clears throat> we have no old business. So new business, the presentation of service awards. Uh, Mr. Bittner. Sure, I'm glad to do this. <laughs> Burgess, your city's service pin. No. Thank you, sir. You're going to have to stand up. For my seat. That, that'll get you into, uh, what would that get him into? That gives him lots of places, sir. Lots of places. <laughs> right where you want to be. You have free breakfast at Helen's Kitchen. <laughs> now, that'd be worth it. May get you, in, may get you out of a few places. Congratulations. <laughs> Bittner, do you have any uh, remarks that you'd like to share with us? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank the Lord pass the ammunition. <laughs> okay, I'd like to uh, introduce a new uh, board member, David Dillingham. David, can you tell us, introduce yourself, please? Uh, yes, sir. Dave, I'm David Dillingham. I live on Decatur Road. I've been, I've been living in the city for many years now. And I'm glad to be here. Thank you. All right. Thanks for joining us. And now we have a um, nomination at the, in the uh, election. Sir, uh, first, we have to uh, swear in Mr. Dillingham as oh, a member. I'm sorry. That's all right. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dillingham, please, sir. Oh. If you'll you put your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand, sir, and repeat after me. I, David Dillingham. I, David Dillingham. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support and maintain the Constitution. I will support the Constitution. And laws of the United States. And the laws of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and the laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office. As a member of the Board of Adjustment. As a member of the Board of Adjustment. So help me back. So help me back. Okay, sir. I'll get you something right here, please. Time to take, like to take some nominations for election of a new chairman and vice chairman. And there are some stipulations, Mr. Ouellette. Uh Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as outlined in the Unified Development Ordinance, the UDO, uh, which governs this board, uh, election of officers, chairman and vice chairman can serve up to two consecutive terms. With that being said, uh, Mr. Herbo has had served two consecutive terms. Therefore, he is not eligible for the chairman position. He could potentially be eligible for vice chair should you choose to go that route. But I just wanted uh, you all to know that uh, Mr. Herbo is not eligible for nomination as a chairperson. Mr. Dillingham, who is the city alternate to the board, 
as his uh, position as an alternate, he is not eligible for nomination to a for a chairman or vice chairman. Uh, Mr. Goldman is the vice chairman at present. He is serving his first term. He is eligible to serve a second consecutive term as vice chair, or should the nominations go that way, he could potentially be nominated as chairperson, receive that nomination, and just move his seat. Uh, as well as all the other board members, Mr. Stewart, Mr. Burgess, Mr. Ray, are eligible for either position, chairman or vice chair. So with that being said, sir, back to you. Thank you. Do we have any nominations for the question? In the event, say you were nominated to be chairman, would he have two consecutive terms or one one term if as, who as would chairman? Be, I, I can't he's be. He's in, he's in he, a second term. Mr. Herbold right. cannot be nominated for. But the vice chairman, if he moves up to chairman, would he have two cons two terms? As at chairman, that position, or the yes. one that he's already served, and then one as chairman. No, it's two years in each position. At, at the position. So, do we have any nominations for Please position? clarification. Oh. Can Mr. Dillingham vote since he's the mm -hmm. alternate, and we're missing one member? Is that because it's an EKGA? Mm -hmm. No, sir. he is the city alternate, and we have a full city board with four members. Therefore, he cannot. Even though we don't have the ETJ alternate here. That's correct. Okay, okay sir. All right, Gary. What's, what is what is your um your interest? You have an interest in um uh, serving as the vice chair, or no? Have you served as the vice chair? Have you served as the vice chair before? Probably in the past fifteen years, once or twice. So, <laughs> so, so would they, wouldn't that count as consecutive service? No, consecutive no. means in the same office. Appointed this year for this calendar year, and next year for the next mm -hmm. calendar year. Three years from now, he would not be eligible to serve in that position again. Uh, Marty, what, what, what are your interests? It doesn't. I mean, we've been so busy with this board. Um, <laughs> I actually had to brush the dust off the book yesterday just to see if it was still in my in the closet. Um, I'm fine with it. I, I mean, I, I've got. I'm retired. 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 I've got a couple other boards I do things with, but it's I'll do whatever the whatever the board wants. Well, um, I'd like to nominate um, Marty for um, for chair, and I don't I know uh, Gary had done vice chair before. Now I really don't know what his interests are. He didn't, he didn't say, but it doesn't matter to me. Can you get here on time? <laughs> I'll, excuse me. The, the, he did today. He did. The city Five council early. stopped me at the front door of the, the city hall. I second both those nominations. Right. Well, I, I want to nominate uh, Gary for vice chair. <laughs> and get his name out there mm -hmm. first. <laughs> Don't want an empty chair. You have experience. <clears throat> A little bit. It's not like we have to break somebody new into that. And it's like you said, we are I mean, we are not exactly overworked. Hardly overworked. <laughs> I mean, it lasted me and lasted 46 minutes, and that's because the attorneys couldn't agree to come back in and tell us that, <laughs> stop it, we're going to talk to each other some more. Yeah. <laughs> so, so they need to orally accept. It, it, it's a nomination and a vote. That's the chairman's, chairman's call to close nominations if he so desires, or? Are there he's, any he's other a candidate, can he, can he close everything? Or? He's still chairman until he's not. Over. <laughs> okay. So are there any other nominations? No. So the nominations will be closed. And uh, now, now we'll have a vote. And the vote for Mr. Goldman as chairman, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? There are none opposed. And for myself as vice chairman, have a vote. Aye. 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 I guess I'll be the vice chairman again. Very good. If we could get both of you gentlemen to come down, Debbie will swear you in. Can. You can. Just say chairman and vice. Take, take half the Bible. 
Okay. Um, I am repeat your name. I uh, Gary Herbold. I'm Marty Golden. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly, solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and maintain the Constitution and laws of the United States. I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office. Mr. Goldman, as chairman of the Board of Adjustment, so help me God. So as chairman of the board, so help me God. And Mr. Gary, as vice chairman of the Board of Adjustment, so help me God. And as Gary Herbold as the Vice Chairman of the Board of Adjustments, so help me God. Thank you, gentlemen. That's yours. This is yours. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There you go. Thank you, Dan. It's amazing a couple of former servicemen, when you tell them to take an oath, they get all nervous and, you know, it's hard to say the words because they think of the past. <laughs> They're just having second thoughts and what about a couple realistic. Of those got me. That really? <laughs> Congratulations, gentlemen. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. That was a nice reenlistment ceremony. Oh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Goldman, meeting okay. George now. Uh, thank you all for everything you do with your volunteering, and we'll try not, we'll try to continue not to overwork you in quasi-judicial process. Gary and Mr. Fisher. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we put this on the agenda today, uh, mostly an administrative meeting. We do not have a case to be heard uh, this month. But I wanted to bring up some things about the judicial process and the judicial proceedings. And we do have new members or members that actually haven't uh, been involved with a case to date uh, because we do meet so infrequently. So at this time, I'd like to ask Mr. Fisher if he would just talk a little bit about quasi-judicial process and procedures and how they pertain to this board. Sure. Um, these are things you've heard me say before, and I just, I don't want to bore you to death. I do know we have a couple of new members. I think Matt's heard me talk about this a little bit. Mr. Billingham maybe hasn't. But kind of the things I want to focus on is most of the time when we have a case, um, you may hear about it before the case actually comes before this board. And we just need to remember that you are acting in a quasi-judicial capacity. In other words, you're not a court, we're not a court, but we act between the enforcement <coughs> section of the city and the courts to make certain decisions. And because you're sitting in judgment of certain things, there are certain rules or things that you need to kind of keep in mind um, so that we don't appear, so that we're not biased in one way or another. Obviously, there's a certain amount of decorum that there, there has to be at the meetings. It's not an informal discussion. It is actually a hearing where you're going to hear evidence and then ultimately make a decision. The parties need to understand that that's the way that process works. There is a procedure. So we do hear witnesses, and we, we hear their testimony, and then we can cross-examine those people. But you just can't have a lot of people speaking all at the same time because that's not the way it works in, in a quasi-judicial hearing. Um, you, you actually are the judge and the jury of that particular case, and because of that, you can't discuss those things prior to that day. So if your friends come to you and say, look, we got this situation down in this area. Let me tell you about what's going on there. Technically, you can't listen to that if that's a current case or a case that's going to be before the board because it may affect you. And you're only allowed to hear what the evidence is, not what rumor is or what friends or relatives or somebody like that may want to be. Um, also, each party that shows up has the right to question all witnesses. 
So if somebody comes up to you outside of this hearing and they make comments to you, they may not be a witness. And whoever the other party is, is not going to know who that person was, that you had that conversation. They will not then be able to cross-examine that person. So you want to make sure that you don't talk to people about it. If they come to you and say, I need to talk to you about this, you need to, you know, you need to say, I, I can't. I'm on the Board of Adjustment. It's a pending case before us. If you know that it is, and let it go from there. And then wait till you get here to have that heard. Like I said, you all know that we can question witnesses. We can cross-examine witnesses. Each of the parties have that right. And then once you've heard all the evidence, you, have a, you then deliberate. Once it is closed, and a lot of people don't understand this, but once the, hear, once the evidence is presented, <coughs> then the parties no longer have a right to be heard. They have a right to be in here. But they don't have a right to say, oh, y'all are talking about this now. Let me explain that to you. Unless you ask them for direction, that hearing, as far as evidence goes, is closed. And the board then has its own discussion of the facts. So somebody can't then pop up and say, oh, you misunderstood what I said. Or let me tell you a little bit more about that. Unless the board itself decides they want to hear it. Now, that is not like the city council. The city council is not a quasi-judicial board, and so they can, have, they can have all kinds of things happen differently than they happen here because we're making ultimate decisions on certain issues about the ordinances. Um, we have to conduct our de deliberations in public. We can't say, okay, if y'all excuse us a little while, we're going to make a decision. You know how juries do. Juries retire into the jury room to make a decision. <clears throat> You cannot do that. You have to do yours in public. You have to sit and have an open discussion in front of everybody, and that's the way that works. Um, the board members can talk among themselves. They can talk to the parties. You can talk to me at any time during the process. You can say, what do you think, or what can we do here, or you have any suggestions? We can have a conversation, and you can ask questions of each other, however you want to do that. At the conclusion of the evidence, once you've made your decision, once you've deliberated, we must have findings of fact and we must vote on certain things. The law is very clear that you can't just say approved or disapproved. You have to go through a process and usually the planning department provides us with a sheet and we have to make specific findings as to those sheets because those are our findings of fact and that has to be part of the order. If the case goes up to the Superior Court, which is the appeal from us, if the case goes up to the Superior Court, the court's going to be looking at those findings of fact. So we have to be very careful how those are handled, voted on, and drafted. And then that's where I come in to kind of give some direction to the board as to how those issues are going to be addressed. Can I insert something? You here? certainly can. Yes, Matt, sir. Matt, have you and David seen the list of the, of the qualifying points? Uh, I believe it's in here that I went over. Eight years ago. Uh, Mr. Dillingham, I haven't put the whole package okay. together for him yet. <clears throat> Excerpts from the ordinance and an actual case, you know, and how the staff report is put together. That's real. They're really, to me, I mean, they're like the guiding light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. um, they really keep you on track, so to speak, besides Keith being what, very helpful. Well, and it gives us, you're right, it gives us direction because there are a lot of points we have to go through. The law changed a few years ago. <coughs> Honestly, used to, if a person wanted a variance, we all know that the hurdle to get a variance was probably too high for anybody ever to get one. But the law changed, and that lowered that bar just a little bit that made it a whole lot easier. I won't say it. it's not easy, but it was easier to get a variance than it, than it used to be. Um, there's not a whole lot more to say that, you know, that I think that I need to say today. If we have a specific case, we can have these discussions. My key thing is that you understand that when we make a decision, it's not your job to try to satisfy the applicant. It's not your job to try to satisfy the general public. It's, it's your job to look at the facts, to look at the evidence, and make a decision. As I've said before, if the council doesn't like the decision, the council can always go back and change the ordinance in some way. But you have an obligation to make an interpretation based on the facts, not what you think somebody wants you to decide or how you think would work best. You are to look at those facts in every specific case 
and that's all you're to consider is just what goes on there. And so if I could, you know, you mentioned the council could go and amend the ordinance or direct staff to come up with new language, but the council can also, because the city, the council is a party, they can also appeal a decision right. of the board. If you, if you made a decision in favor of an applicant who was challenging the ordinance for lack of a better term and you voted to uphold the applicant's request and the city was still adamant about their ordinance is what we want, these are the guidelines, we feel strongly enough that then the city appeals your decision no different than the applicant appeals your decision. That's right, because we do not represent the city of Jacksonville. Nope. We do not represent the applicant. Like I say, we are somewhere between enforcement in the city and the courts, and we're to look at this thing fairly, uh, honestly, evenly, and then make a decision <laughs> based on what we see. And in each case, you'll have direction. Well, you'll have the city making their argument in each of those, and they'll provide you information. You'll have the applicant making their argument, and then you're going to have us, you as a board and me and as attorney, trying to advise what we need to look at and how we need to go from there. My key thing, if you don't remember anything else that I say today, is be careful who you talk to prior to cases <coughs> because you don't need to bias yourself in some way so that you can't sit. Because truly there are situations where if you get information ahead of time, you're not going to be allowed to sit on this board and make a decision because you, you'll be disqualified. So be careful those people coming to you and saying, I filed this thing with the board and I know you're on the board of adjustment and uh, it's coming up for hearing. Let me explain to you what's going on. You can't do that. You're not allowed to do that. And if you have any questions at any time, either during the hearing or, I mean, outside of this, I mean, prior to a hearing, if you have a question, you have a right, you certainly can call me and I'll be happy to discuss that with you anytime. Thank you. Right. With, with that, thank you, Mr. Fisher. <coughs> I wanted to um, talk just real quick about the last meeting we had in January. We actually had a case on the agenda where we had a party that was requesting uh, the Board of Adjustment uh, look at ordinance deficiencies we had with regard to uh, a use within the community. It was actually the Oxford House uh, in the Country Club area. It's a matter of public record. And uh, the representatives from the Oxford House uh, was appealing uh, our current ordinance with regard to the number of uh, persons who could reside in a single family dwelling, uh, the use as a residence versus a group home, a rehab facility, or whatever term uh, any, that you use, but there is federal and state law and case law regarding persons with disabilities uh, handicaps, substance abuse, rehab, so on and so forth. With that being said, the applicant made application. The case was on the agenda before this board. However, the parties involved, the applicant, their attorneys, uh, the planning staff, management with the city, the city attorney uh, worked extremely hard. Uh, it was a very difficult case, it would have been an extremely challenging case for this board or any board. And I'm sure it was, and I'm, Mr. Bittner could probably attest to this, it was certainly a challenging situation for the city council. But I want to give credit to the planning staff and the city management, city manager, the city attorney, Working with this group, uh, the last council meeting on the agenda, there was a amendment to the Unified Development Ordinance, uh, adding some language about reasonable accommodations. 
as well as amending the use table and providing use standards with regards to separation and parking and things of that nature that a resolution to this <coughs> difficult land use problem was resolved with a lot of hard work by a lot of a lot of very professional hard-working individuals and uh, I give them credit it was hard for this board to sit for 30 40 minutes not knowing what was going on but like Mr. Fisher said earlier we act much like a court and if any of you have been selected for jury duty and been on jury duty you well know you could sit in a courtroom and listen to evidence all morning long and then the judge recesses for lunch and they come back and say thank you for your service but you're no longer needed and this situation was exactly that but it doesn't take away from the importance of what this board does what you're tasked with and how much you're appreciated for the service you provide to the city well and i think in that situation um, the Board of Adjustment, even though never heard the case, provided a very valuable service to the city because had it not been for the Board of Adjustment being in place and prepared to hear it, then you probably would have had a lawsuit filed against the city <coughs> and this matter would have been resolved in a federal court somewhere at great expense to the city. So by sitting there for a few minutes, I know it wasn't the greatest thing in the world, but it did resolve an issue that would have cost us a whole lot more down the road. Um, we had at that time, and I don't know if you know, but we had two out-of-town attorneys, one representing the city of Jacksonville along with our, our very able city attorney and an attorney representing Oxford House at the same time. Everybody was here prepared to go forward on a very complicated case that would have required this board to analyze federal laws and federal statutes and federal cases concerning those issues. It would have been difficult. Either way that case went, there would have been an appeal. The city probably would have appealed it had, had Oxford House won, Oxford probably would have appealed it or filed a federal action. So we helped, even though you don't know it, maybe you helped divert uh, the city spending a whole lot of money and thanks to the city council and a lot of hard work, like Gary said, they were able to work it out. So thank you all so much for being patient. Uh, we were able to work through that. Yes, sir. Can we give uh, reference to exactly how it was resolved? I, I'm not sure. The city council ultimately Again, the, changed the The staff the drafted up uh, new ordinance language, so they actually added uh, a section in the ordinance which addresses reasonable accommodations. And what reasonable accommodation, accommodation is, and I'm not the duty expert on this, but it, it's basically the ordinance has use standards in certain zoning districts, things are allowed and not allowed. And if you're not going to allow a specific use in a specific zoning district, then you have to provide reasonable accommodations elsewhere in the city, okay? You don't want a certain type of use in a certain zoning district, but you cannot totally zone out the use from the entire city. So you have to make reasonable accommodations somewhere within the city. So by doing so, you establish reasonable accommodations and then you change the table of permitted uses and what's allowed in certain zoning districts to allow certain uses, to allow Oxford houses in certain zoning districts. With that being said, you can also uh, place standards and criteria. So you allow them in a certain di zoning district. However, they have to be a quarter mile away from a like use, another Oxford house or another group home. Uh, you limit the number of residents in a home to eight. So you can't have 12 or 15 people in a single family dwelling, regardless of the size of the dwelling. 
parking accommodations. If you have eight adults living in a single family dwelling, if all eight of them own vehicles, that could be pretty disruptive to the neighborhood. So there's parking accommodations. All of these standards were written, reviewed by the planning staff, reviewed by the planning board, reviewed by the council, and eventually adopted by the council at their last meeting. So that's, that's how it got resolved. The Oxford House was happy that, yes, they can have it. Yes, your standards aren't so strict that we, we feel you're, uh, what's the word, discriminating against us. You know, we can make this work. City Council feels that they did the right thing to also keep the integrity of a neighborhood and that perception there. So it was it was a win-win situation, I think, for everybody. You don't live in that neighborhood. Oxford House snuck into the neighborhood invite and set up a, a halfway house or whatever you want to call it in violation of city ordinances. And the city caved in because they're afraid of a federal lawsuit. That's what this board, that's what the city did. I would say that's, that's an, I, I was, that's an opinion that I don't have. Reason being is because the Oxford House is protected by certain legislation in respects to. Oxford House knew what the ordinances was before they even established the house. They knew they were going to be in violation of the city ordinances. But did it anyhow. But that wasn't the issue. Yeah, it is. The, the issue was Oxford House was H Oxford House was saying that the city ordinance was not practical. They knew so what they, they knew what the law was before they even came into this town. But they were saying that, that the ordinance what the <coughs> ordinance was not practical. That's why the staff <coughs> amended the UDO and gave the su suggestion to the council. They approved it, so there wouldn't be any issue of whether or not. Um, the law would, had a, a disproportionate effect on any organization or business, so it's, it's that way now. I see you already got another Oxford house in this town already. It's up on University. How many more are you going to allow? What's the distance? The distance is not the question. How many more of these are you going to allow? Isn't it a certain distance they have to be apart from each other? Well, you know, yes, yes there is, and if a land use or a property owner is in violation of code, then due notice of violation is going to be initiated. This all, that's how that case came to the Board of Adjustment in the first place. They were given a notice of violation that they were in violation of the code. They appealed that violation to this board. Granted, this board didn't hear it. But whether, and we're all human, we're all entitled to our opinions, but what the city governing body chooses to do or not to do is, is not this board's place to say, it's, it's this board's place to look at the ordinance, hear evidence, and, you know, as citizens, and we're all citizens of the community, there's going to be things we like and don't like with the governing body, things that go on in our neighborhoods, so on and so forth, and there's avenues to express your concerns to elected officials and management and things of that nature, but as, as a board, we, we hear evidence, we weigh evidence, and we make a decision as a board regardless of where we live. Okay. Anything else, Gary? No, sir. All right. <clears throat> Any comments by people at the table? And before I call for adjournment, there are two things I'd like to say. Um, one, thank you for your service. You've been strongly overworked in the last year and a half, two years. <laughs> I will continue to try and carry forth that quest. The other thing that, I wanted that flag staff gets heavier. Does it? Mm. Yep. Um, the other thing I want to say, and and 
one of the reasons we don't end up meeting is that we have one of the best staffs probably in the United States. I mean, they go above and beyond. So my thanks to Gary, to Debbie, and the rest of the staff. And Jerry, I'd be appreciated if you'd pass that on to the city council. What a great job they do. Will do, thank you. Okay, and with that, I'll call for a motion to adjourn. Move for adjourn. You wanna stay here? <laughs> and a second. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carried. Thank you, gentlemen.